right, what's up, guys? We got a preview of Eagles Redskins, which is sure to be a destruction of the bad guys. Uh, I feel pretty confident that the season is on its way up, and we're at least going to make some kind of push at making making the season interesting for us because all Eagle fans, uh, I think if we're honest, got really, really worried and still are kind of worried uh, with the way that we started and some of the uh, some of the things that we saw. So this is a big week for us. They're not really out of it because their division is sort of a mess. Such a mess, bro. <laughs> Such a mess, yeah. Like every nobody really started that strong in the division. Uh, the best team, uh, the team with the best start in the division, I think, was the Redskins. Maybe the Cowboys. Well, the Cowboys. The Cowboys were one and one also. Well, the Cowboys went, uh, yeah, actually two and zero, oh, and, and could very well have been three and zero oh had they not just, Good call. just Good completely call. lost it against Atlanta last week. But yeah, Giants uh, barely. Coming in at, at, uh, what, at the what, one 20. and two, skins, one and two, Eagles, one, one and two. two. Yep. And okay, so the Cowboys are, are missing and so one. many guys. So And, yeah, yeah, the big very, competition is missing very their key weapons. Division. And I, I could really see if the Eagles can oh, get their offense together, time. how they could really turn this thing around and, and be in it. Absolutely. Sadly, the Giants are saying the same thing right now, and I don't think many many Redskins fans are feeling that way. But yeah, that's that's just what the division is. But all of that, <clears throat> all that means is that we've got to win ball games, especially division ball games. Yes. And this is one that seems very winnable. It's a very winnable game. I don't have a lot of positive feelings for the Redskins. Not, not so much in whether I like them or don't. Just I don't think the organization is very quality, nope. and the, the team is seems to just be a disaster all around. The defense is not terrible. Of uh, not that you could tell by watching this, <laughs> where a guy just completely falls down. So no one else can catch him. Yeah, yeah, we've got athletes, man. We've got athletes, get them the ball in space. That's the idea, but we've talked at nauseum about about the about Chip Kelly's Chip Kelly's system in the college game versus versus the pros. And it just it's a little bit different when you're getting balls in space in that college game where you're just a better athlete, you know, your players are better athletes than the players lining up across from them. Um, so it's got to be a little bit more strategic and calculated, and I don't know, some other decisions obviously need to be made. That's all I'll say. I'm not going to go on the, the beat up our team, uh, our team tirade again this week, especially coming <laughs> off a win. A win where they looked pretty good in the first half, and then let the Jets get get in it a little bit to make it interesting at the end, but. At least they found some offense, and they found it without DeMarco Murray last week. Right. Right. I'm still worried about that. That seems... He's, he's better than that. He's, he's better than than what we've seen. And, it, you know, it wasn't his fault that he didn't play. Um, I complained about that. The screen that we just saw, the screenplay that we just saw, I complained about it live, and I'm going to complain about it again. How does Darren Sproles not know to run around that defensive uh, end who's... Making the the Daniel step. <laughs> Anytime a DN goes around the outside, that's officially the Daniel step now. Uh, well, your DNs had no problems figuring out what to do. Smack, smack. Can you can you tell a difference in the way the game is playing with this uh, most recent roster update? Is this a bit, a bit. It does. I think we said this during the the game. It seems like the the bad teams are worse. Are are worse in in ways that that don't necessarily make sense, or or in ways that ensure that they remain bad. Bad. Yes. Yep. yep. Absolutely. That you're not meant to 
you know, if the game feels like the Eagles are a better team than the Redskins, there's a very uphill battle for the Redskins there. Yeah, yeah there's absolutely that, there was absolutely that feel to this game. Um, and the, yeah, the Eagles don't feel like they've gotten any kind of boost, nor should they have. It's just the Redskins seem yeah, the game is really, really bad. On the Redskins and somewhat rightfully so, but sometimes you know a good play call should should result in a good play at least some of the time. Yeah, it's just a game. The Redskins fans want to have fun too. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I guess we don't really think about that because our teams are can be bad, but they're never that bad. Right. So, you know, if you're a Browns fan or a Skins fan or a Jags fan and you buy Madden every year, you're just miserable the whole time because you, you guys are so inept. You know what you do? Play with a different team. Play ultimate team. Play ultimate team. Yeah, you play ultimate team. Yeah, absolutely. Make the Jaguars good. As in, give them Aaron Rodgers. You know, give them, give them Marco Murray. As an NBA fan or NBA 2K fan, something. As an NBA 2K fan, something that I've found over the years, or as a Lakers fan who plays a lot of NBA 2K, let me say that. Um, there came a point where I was playing a lot of my player and doing things that didn't involve me having to play with a miserable team. That's really what's going on now. I didn't play many games with the Lakers last year. When my go-to move when playing those when playing the game in the past has been one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one versus other users playing with real teams. And the Lakers were competitive, but they're just not—they're not in a position to be competitive anymore. So I just—I don't touch them, um, or at least not as often as I used to. And I guess that's what goes on here. But it, it feels like the teams get dumped down even more so than they do in, in a basketball game. So for that, I have sympathy for fans of bad teams. I'm not going to say for Redskins fans. I have sympathy for fans of bad teams. Look at this. So this <laughs> and that was the moment, right? This is coming out of the half, right? <laughs> the defense gives up a, a play to to make it beyond a two score game at the half. We come out first play out of the half. Kirk Cousins, who is absolutely horrible and the worst quarterback I've played with in Madden 16. That's far, huh? I will commit it. To, uh, offend people, whatever. Kirk Cousins does doesn't. No, anyone, anyone, start your kicker at quarterback before you and, and get the same results <laughs> as Kirk Cousins. He was absolutely terrible, and we haven't talked a lot about what's going on on the screen because it's 26-0. Washington has had maybe one first down at this point. Oh, it is. Uh, it was just it's a rough day at the office for the Redskins, and then Colt McCoy comes in. And on his second attempt, throws another interception. So the Redskins, oh, please, please. We've got to play with these guys again later on in the season. <laughs> yeah, by then they will have won two games and gotten a little bit. Maybe, maybe. Can't, you know. Fair enough, that's what we need to see out of Murray. That once he's running, he's hard to stop. But getting him the ball on a swing pass as we just saw here is is a little less likely to happen right yeah uh, just I'm, completely strokes the golf we want to see that power game from him man and i'm he didn't play any last week so i guess i can't really be down on that but it's still just more so than it's him not playing it's just another game with no yards is what it feels like so I don't know, I'm, I'm anxious to see him use in a way that highlights his abilities so that we can, so that, I, so that I feel like I've confirmed that he's either not the player that we hoped he was or that are affirmed that he is the player that we thought he was. That was just a beastly run. I think that was... <laughs> a lot of crazy jukes and then Morris gets the first down. I was a little upset with the... Get that. The computer no, was... Get that one. Oh, no. That, Oh, just a bad, maybe a bad button press, but 
there's no reason that the guy should have just held his arms out like a basket and caught that. Just right. right full disclosure, that should have been should've an been. unfortunate interception. Should have been, should have been. I was pressing Y. I, I switched to a player and then I get that. <sighs> Ryan Matthews and Darren Sproles ran the offense very well last week, which made a lot of sense. And it, and it has me wondering if those two come out again this week and run the offense well and, and Murray sits again. Why not? At, at what point do you feel like, well, maybe we're okay with just Matthews and Sproles, which is one more good running back than most teams have. Right. And maybe you try to get something for DeMarco Murray before week eight. Maybe. Okay. I accept that. I accept that. Uh, Ryan Matthews, Darren Sproles feels like Plus he's Poor unhappy, man. which he had to kind of see coming because he comes from a system where he's a lead back and, and enters a system where there's three running backs. Well, you would think that would help him out considering, like, the, the big concern with him and coming in, with him coming into this year was he had so many carries last year, how is he going to bear that kind of load again? Mm. Fair and enough. it seemed perfect with, well, he doesn't have to bear that kind of load. He's got his two, you know, brothers there with him who can handle business. Um, we just, we, we haven't seen him contribute. Um, and that, that leads to those questions of, is he done? And uh, God, I hope not. I really hope not. Um, everything that I've heard about him and his work ethic and energy and blah 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 leads me to believe that it's highly possible that he's not done but then again it's possible that he is and if that's the case then let's go ahead and try and get something for him um, because one of the selling points can definitely be hey he doesn't have many miles on those wells this season he's well rested he is well rested yeah and if you need someone to it's like there's a a the couple teams that would stand to have a running back. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Who, I mean, who, yeah, who couldn't use one? Ryan Matthews has got a bit of speed, too, on a, on a couple of plays ago where he comes out of the backfield and makes a just a quick inside turn up field. It happens so fast. Matthews is the fastest running back on my ultimate team also. He's a speed back, for sure. Like, he's got a little speed and a little power. I just acquired him. Within the last few days, and so he's at 90. I was really surprised by that running yeah. speed. Yep. And and in Ultimate Team, especially. Yeah. Any, with, a 90 the, is a very fast player in Ultimate Team. All right, I'm patting myself on the back right now. I finally. It seems like I get one of those like every <laughs> every 50 screens you throw, but I'm ready for. I'll say at least half of the screens they get thrown, and I'm trying to do that, and right. it doesn't happen. I mean, we're both on to each other. There's there's a lot of plays that we see coming. You're much better at, at usering, especially in the shallow game, try to get those interceptions. So, yeah, I've, I've dodged quite a few bullets with you being back there. Not that time. That one also took a long time it's, to set up. Yeah, we talked about that uh, live game. That screen took forever to develop. So just a word to the wise guys, when those screens start developing slowly like that, take a look and make sure there's not anything goofy happening uh, coming from the linebackers or safeties because it might be a bad move for you and your team. Yeah. And there's and a sign that the play is being blown up. A lot of those screens have a route on the opposite side where a guy just runs deep or runs a deep cross. It's really hard to keep your eyes on those two places at the same time. Yep. But sometimes if, if the... The defense commits heavy to the underneath and the screen, then then those guys can get very open. Yeah, go ahead and try and make the read to see if it looks like a player might be in position to blow up the screen. You have about so, two seconds to do that before you even need to look at the screen. Most of the sure, time. sure, 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 sure. Yeah, and yeah, if if it's gone, then go ahead and take a like Daniel saying, go ahead and take a look at that other route because more so than any other year. That receiver going out on on that secondary route or the, the route on the other side of the field will make a play on the ball. They used to not do that. Oh, especially in one on one, give him a shot. What's, what do you have to lose yeah. this year? Yeah, yeah, they'll make a play. So that, I, I, you know, we're just trying to score some points. We got fifty 
points scored against us. I'm furious uh, of this, <laughs> about having to play with these guys for the last hour at this point. And after the yet another drop that a guy could have easily caught, I decided I'm just, I'm just, we're just leaving. We're so embarrassed to be the football team. Hey, hey, thanks for not killing me today. There you go. Side thanks, note. Thanks a lot. Sam Bradford uh, gets the win against Colt McCoy and. For those who were fans of the show, you guys know Further that I'm hammering home your argument. Yeah, I, I, I became a Bradford fan in, when he was in college, and I use the word fan loosely because I don't pull for other teams. But I believed he was an immensely better quarterback than Colt McCoy, and I didn't understand the argument for Colt, so I took a little bit of pleasure in my Bradford-led Eagles uh, beating up on the <laughs> semi- Colt McCoy led Redskins, you know, McCoy getting his shot after Cousins proved to be ridiculous. Cousins isn't proving to be much better. He, I don't know, it, things were kind of a little fooled by week one. They played the Dolphins close. Right. And a lot of people thought the Dolphins were very good. Well, it, it's starting to look like the Dolphins aren't as good. Sure. So... That makes the Redskins not as good, you know. You, you absolutely, you, absolutely. I can see that. You almost beat a team that's looking kind of bad. Well, on that note, I don't. I'm not going to say that the the Eagles are going to win 50 to seven, but I do feel that the Eagles will win by multiple scores. Now, sure. I said that about the Patriots and Jags last week, and the Patriots ended up putting 50 on the Jags, 51. So. Uh, maybe maybe my prediction here will, will help your Eagles out, and, and they'll put 50 on the skins, and I you know you'd love every second of that. I would, I and I feel like Chip Kelly owes us a 50-point game. <laughs> because that's that offense is, is built Bro. to score 50 points, Bro. right? What, what's he there for if the team isn't scoring points? It's not defense. Well. It sure ain't defense. Right. So if the team's not scoring points... What is Chip Kelly getting a, getting a check for? You know, uh, it's a little late. Sorry, guys. I know I said I wasn't going to get negative. <laughs> well, then then I'll, I won't stay negative, but I'll say this. I, this is probably the wrong week to give this example because he's not having such a great time either. But what did you get rid of Andy Reid for? Because Andy Reid could have put up the same win losses with a, with a more pro-suited offense. That basically does the same thing. It's you know little dump off passes and quick actions and and you get a little you get fun plays from Andy Reid also. You get some goofy trickery from time to time and whatever. I, 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 know, I love Andy. He's he's my coach. I lied. I want to go off on one quick quick thing about that uh, that that I'm thinking of when it, in regards to Andy Reid and it's it's making me think about Rex Ryan as well. Mm -hmm. Well, you get rid of these coaches that are good coaches. I mean, sometimes we know that a, a coach is maybe not the best coach, and sometimes they're good coaches. Right. Uh, Andy Reid's a good coach. Rex right. Ryan's a good coach. Right. They leave, and then the team immediately, you know, when they bring in their new guy, they're like, what players do you want? Let us go get them for you. Well, Andy Reid needed players. He clearly Rex need, Ryan needed players. Clearly needed players. Rex Ryan right? wanted Revis when he was there. Rex Ryan could have used some Absolutely. of the weapons that they've got. Absolutely. So... You know, don't just always keep that in mind that that you know a lot of coaches can be good when the front office decides to get behind them and actually go out and try to get players. There's players out there every year. It's just will your upper you know GMs with the owner spend the money to help the people out. So best stat I saw this year. No, I'll I'll, I'll finish my thoughts with this. Best stat that I've seen so far this year was during the. Uh, during the Packers game on Sunday night, they showed a a picture or a little, it was in some way highlighted that the Packers have just three players on their team that they didn't draft. There's three players on the team. Or, well, Rich Eisen actually talked about this uh, yeah, yesterday. Right on. 33 players on the Packers organization Drafted by the Packers organization. It's amazing. Uh, and of their starters, only three. Is that what it is? Only three drafted players uh, weren't 
weren't theirs originally. You know, if they acquire them by free agency, they weren't really counting that as part right, of the absolutely. stat. Right, absolutely. Yeah, the, the Packers, they draft and they keep guys and they make good decisions. And, you know, that's okay, the sign wait, of a, wait, wait, wait. a good organization. You're saying that, free, okay, free agent players were... They weren't counted in that stat because, you know, there's 53 guys on the team. So they're okay. saying 33 of those 53 guys were draft. Okay, were, so... Were, so the team isn't exclusive. It's, right, it's not right. 53 they, players they that are on the team. They still have to go out and get guys. but Okay. So around 20 players were picked up through free agency. Right. Okay, okay. That makes a lot more sense. But that's a huge number. That's still a huge number. And they were just number two. I forget who they said was number one. Was that, it? It wasn't the Bills. No, it wasn't. It was some of the other. They were, just, they were just number two, though. There was another team that was out there like that. And I say all that to say that my team is... It seems like we're just like a patchwork of people, and we got rid of some incredible homegrown talent recently, some Andy Reid homegrown talent. And I was going to say, like, well, if if what I thought was the case where all of, there's only three players that weren't drafted by the Packers and less for whoever the first place team is, maybe, like, you get rid of Andy Reid and Rex Ryan because they're not good in the draft. Like, that's the only argument that I could... Like that's kind of where, where where I went in my head when I saw that when I saw that uh, that stat being brought mm-hmm. up. Like, okay, were were we just not drafting well because we had we had some kind of bad moves. We picked up some good guys and we pulled some gems out of packs, but we've had some bad moves also. On Monday Night Football, speaking of the Packers, which was just not pretty at all for the poor Andy Reid Chiefs, but oh, God. Uh, there was a time where. They were showing Aaron Rodgers, and, and you know some of these stories get played out. Like we all know that Aaron Rodgers is a bit of a chip on his shoulder for being drafted late in the in round one. Sure. When he thought you know he, he was the best quarterback in the draft, and he uses that to to fuel uh, himself into being one of, if not the best quarterback in the league. Right. Well, John Gruden, you know, they were discussing that, and he's like, you know, I was in Tampa that year, and I passed on him and, and drafted Cadillac Williams, and Cadillac was pretty good, but, you know, can't help but wonder, <laughs> right? what if I had drafted Aaron Rodgers? You know, a lot of teams had the opportunity to get him. Sorry. So getting into the picks, a little, a little breeze through those. Giants at Bills uh, are the first NFC game on Sunday. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go Bills fairly with with a little bit of confidence. I, I think Bills defense is gonna gonna really give the Giants offense some fits. They can cover the receivers well enough, and um, quarterback play is getting better for the Bills. The run game solid. They've got some you know, and it's not much of a drive for the Giants, but it's a home game for the Bills. Right on. Well, I'm gonna go with the Bills because I we need the Giants to lose. Yes. Um, and for the reasons that you mentioned, you know, it's a it's also a calculated decision. Bills have as good a shot as the Giants. It's kind of a toss up in my head, but because that team is so goofy, the Giants, and they make some weird things happen. But yeah, I'll take the Bills. Next up, Panthers at Bucks. I think it's a pretty easy easy call for me, Panthers. Although it's still early in the year, I won't be surprised by anything that the Panthers have a tendency to play down to their they kind of yeah yeah they're they're just an up and down team but i feel like they have a lot more talent on the roster than than the bucks and they're uh in command of the nfc south right now and 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 could really use a win here to get some more distance they're tied up with the falcons i should say they're uh, among the top so every win in the division is going to be important to them you went Panthers? I'm going Panthers, yeah. Yeah, Panthers, final answer. Bucks, sadly for Dusty, are just not there yet. They're... So, yeah, easy pick. Panthers, Panthers, Falcons, uh, going to make the NFC East or South, whatever it is. NFC South? Yep. NFC South is going to make them the matchup to, to watch in that division. So, there you go. Eagles, Redskins, we, we've talked yeah. about pretty thoroughly I'm, I'm gonna tell you the eagles as a matter of fact i did it with the steelers and barely escaped last week but i'm gonna go eagles it's the lock of the week lock them in nice i'm putting all my faith clank, in. lock clank, them in clank 
Eagles are, are the one team I'm guaranteeing to win this week. All right. If you uh, if you lose any money, just drop the comments down there. <laughs> Let uh, me know what I owe you in the comments below. There it is. Uh, yeah, I'm taking Eagles also, obviously. Uh, Redskins are, are a train wreck. And it's I'm looking forward to watching Robert Griffin sitting over on the sideline, pacing and trying to pretend to be engaged. It's the most captivating thing about watching Redskins games. The the stories about how bad of a teammate he were kind of surprised me because he seemed like such a good guy coming out of college. Yep. And yep. Uh, the fact that you know his O line hated him and uh, you know this is all somewhat hearsay but heavily rumored stuff that he was just not a fun guy to be around. Not a fun guy. And yeah, I'm with you. He didn't seem to be that person. He seemed seemed like a he was he was a he was marketed as a better version of cam yeah uh, personality wise it was a... possible that you know i really felt like he was going to be up there in in kind of the way that you think about marcus mariota or um russell wilson just those sure. good guy nice face guy, of the yeah. fan franchise sure. hope, hope that you know you want them to do well no matter what even if you don't like the team absolutely. you like the guy and... absolutely playing good on sundays and then Subway commercials afterwards, <laughs> smiling and cheesing. His mom's in the in the uh, military. Not joking about her service. You are appreciated, man. Absolutely. There you go. Raiders at Bears. Bears are a complete disaster. Raiders actually looking not so bad this year. Maybe they're finally turning it around. So I'll, think? I'll take the Raiders. I'll take the Bears. Whatever. God bless the Raiders, but Bears. The Bears need one. Is Forte okay? Forte's okay. Cutler's not, but, you know. Uh, He's, when is he okay? J Jimmy Clausen can throw just as many picks as Jay Cutler. There it is. Uh, we'll yeah. see. It'll be a tight one. I'll, I'm just going to take the Bears just for the sake of conversation. I really don't have a dog in that fight. Texans, Falcons, Julio Jones. Goodness, he's looking so good. Julio! It's like a yeah, roll tight, guys. Love it for Julio, and I still can't get behind the Falcons, but I'll take them to win this game at home against the Texans who are not bad on defense but not good on offense. There there it is. Um, yeah, I'll take the Falcons also. Um, as long as that offensive line can hold up and keep Jadavian Clowney and J.J. Watt off of, uh, off of Matt Ryan, then they should be able to move the ball. And what's the Texans offense going to do if the Falcons can score? 24 to 28 points. Yeah, they're not likely to outscore them. Yeah. Packers at Niners. I don't I don't know that there's going to be a game where I don't pick the Packers. Yeah, can we get a year. train sound every time we talk about <laughs> the Packers and the Patriots cuz uh, yeah. What do you do when two 5,000 pound trains are headed directly towards each other on one train track. I don't know. Maybe I can't watch. Maybe that's how I feel about that. You should probably turn away because it's going to be when you've got loved ones on one of those trains. It's hard to oh, it's hard just... to think about. Sure. Oh, there's a lot of season left, but and the Broncos and the Cardinals are in that mix too. And the Packers are going to play the Cardinals soon enough, so that'll be a pretty fun game. But yeah, the Packers for for sure. If I hadn't already locked in the Eagles, then the Packers would be the easy lock. Yeah. Move, speaking of Cardinals, they have the Rams at home, and the Cardinals look so good right now, and I'm so happy for them. And yeah. less, I'd love them to win out in the NFC. And the Rams are the Rams are the same Rams they've been for the last ten years or so, it seems. So I'll take Cardinals. Watch out, though, Cardinals. Those Rams are Rams headhunters. Are young and headhunters bro yeah, you know, they... i believe in defense man and cardinals don't have a bad one um the offense seems to be getting a lot of cre rightly so getting a lot of credit um but in a in a matchup that in my head appears to be and again i'm not knocking the cardinals defense at all they are the unofficial home team of the belcher household um i'm gonna pick the rams just because i like defense and i'm a big fan of their defense and again, just for a little conversation. Yeah, it could be. A, it could end up being interesting if, if all goes very well for the Rams. But that offense is, yeah, goofy though. You're gonna have to score some points, Rams, a little more than you have been. 
Sure. Vikings Broncos. We're actually going to do a, a, a video of this since the Patriots are on a bye this week, so I won't get into it too much. So, but but the NFC team is the Vikings, and um, I'll just say that they're going to have to. They got to go to Denver, play in the altitude, get that running game going, and good luck against the linebackers in line of the Broncos. The Broncos defense may be. Maybe my vote for best in the league right now is Broncos defense is a little scary at it's times. Sick, Peyton seems to be getting a little better every week, so I got to take the Broncos here. Well, yeah, it's hard. I'm not going to – yeah, I picked the Broncos also. Like you said, that defense is stout. They are – every week they're on my bench on my fantasy team because I have the Seahawks defense also. Well, that's a, and that's a good spot to be in. It is, <laughs> but – Guessing which God, one's going to get more turnovers. One, yeah, I'm starting to feel like maybe the Broncos is the one to, I think to, the to be your had, your one A and maybe Seahawks yeah. is one B. Yeah, the Broncos have had a better season so far, man. The Broncos have had a better season, and well, yeah, we, we've got that Seahawks defense. We're about to talk about them in a second. Uh, God, that's going to be a calculated decision. This uh, week. You know, yeah, because I'm looking at. I was about to say we're not playing each other this week. My friend advice is I feel like you play the Broncos D, but. Uh, Looking at the Seahawks' opponent, and they're at Seattle this week. I'll leave that up to you. This can be a tough one. Yeah, what do you guys think, fans? I've got Broncos defense versus the Seahawks defense. Broncos going against the Vikes. Uh, Seahawks going against the Lions. We'll talk about them in just a second. B both of those, by the way, that you picked the pick before. Like they were, they were getting picked by me. Oh, really? Both, both times. Both defenses? Both, both defenses. That's awesome. We were on opposite ends of the draft, so there were seven people between us. No one took them. Then Wesley takes them, and I'm like, okay, well, then I think the Broncos are going to be pretty good. Right, then Wesley takes them. So, <coughs> that's okay. Um, so, Sunday night football has got to be a little bit uh, regretful about picking this as their game because they, you know, these are predetermined this early in the year, right. and they had no idea they'd be having a it Saint, could be a good one. A Saints with, with probably not Drew Brees, yeah, and the Cowboys without everyone. So, there it is. I'll, so who are you taking? Uh, Saints at home, Cowboys. I just don't have any faith in Brandon Whedon, unfortunately. I'd, right. I'd like for the guy to have some success, but after blowing a four-score lead to the Falcons last week at home. Was that his fault, though? No. Those I mean, play calls were... He doesn't play defense. Were full of... He doesn't, not that there's anything wrong with estrogen, but they were full of estrogen, those play calls that they had out there. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. They, they played very soft in the second half and how do you not just put three guys on Julio Jones I don't know especially when it's getting close like that and he's the, the I mean the run game was really good for the Falcons but you can't give up plays to Julio although they don't have a it's hard to find a real answer for him on a team that doesn't have a one of the A-list cornerbacks sure sure um okay all right, so Lions, <laughs> Monday Night Football lines at Seattle. Oh, who did we take? Did you take? Uh, okay, so we took the Saints? I'm taking Saints. Yeah, I'm taking yeah, the Saints. Home, yeah, all the home doesn't Saints. mean as much to them anymore, but I'll still take the Saints. So. Sorry, I was reading a text. Amy says that there's a copperhead outside. The cat saw it on the back porch, and now it's headed around to the side door. It's not small. You guys pray for Amy and the cats. Stay inside, Amy. When he knocks on the door and says, flower delivery. Don't answer. Don't answer. When he knocks on the door and says, pizza delivery, don't answer. Only some older viewers that watch the very original Saturday Night Live may get this, where there's this thing called Land Shark. I don't that's know right. if you remember. Yeah, I it's remember like, that. Yeah. Knocks on the door. Yeah, like, that's uh, right. Telegram. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes back and forth, back and forth, and they finally <laughs> open the door, and they get eaten by the Land Shark. And it, it I don't know. Some right. of that stuff, it's, I just kind of like stared at it at the time, and then you think back on it, it was actually pretty, pretty good stuff. Lions at Seahawks. <laughs> <laughs> you guys still hear the crud in me. I'm sorry. Um, Seahawks. Seahawks um, are, should start turning around. Probably no Marshawn Lynch, but the run game can can live without him. Yeah. Lions have a lot of weapons and complete, completely inept on how to use any of them from the looks of it. Lions have so far. a lot of weapons, and they, but the thing that I th I feel like they used to hang their hat on was that defense and the defense bolstered by Indomitian Sue 
and what's my guy's name from Auburn? Oh, Nick Fairley. Nick Fairley. For whatever reason, I wanted to say Nick Perry, but yeah, you're right, Nick Fairley. Um, having those two not holding down that defensive tackle spot, holding down the middle of that line, I feel like at least my perception of them has changed. My perception of that defense has changed because they don't have those two beasts clogging up the middle, shutting down the... Like, when you can shut down one thing and dictate what 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 your opponent's going to do to a certain extent, it's easier to game plan, right? Right. So, they just don't feel the same to me. And everything behind where those two players were um, just doesn't feel the same to me anymore. So, they've got a rock, a quarterback with a rocket arm and arguably the best receiver in the game, second best behind Julio at this point, um, if you want to argue that kind of thing. But, you know, you can argue he's the best still also because who's going to argue too much with you? Um, but, yeah, all that said, there's there's not enough happening on defense, I don't know, to match up with the Seahawks' total package. So, Seahawks. And it's at Seattle, so... And it's, yeah, you got 12th man going strong. Yeah, Seahawks turned it around. We'll see. If they're going to do If they're going to, it's going to have to happen it needs to start like very now. soon. Yeah. yeah, like now would be a good time for that. All right, so that's it for the NFC picks and, cool. uh, and our Eagles preview this week. So thanks for watching, everybody. And, and check out Patriots on a bye, but, but we're not. So Broncos, Vikings. No weeks off. <laughs> we'll see you there. Take it easy.